Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gloria and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I wanted to go through some of the plant mistakes that I've made as being a beginner plant mom. So hopefully sharing these experiences with you guys, you guys won't make the same mistake as me. So if you enjoy videos like this or kind of any planty content type of videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So first, as we all know what happened to my Hoya Sunrise, if you saw my last video, actually two videos ago of my uh, June collective haul, this one is my Hoya Sunrise. So it is a stick. It is most likely dead. I got this from Crystal Star Nursery and what happened was I left this in my car in about 25 degree weather. I left it there for about eight hours and totally forgot about it and it pretty much just cooked the roots and all the leaves melted off they turned to mush and yeah this is what's left so it's just kind of a stick i don't know like is it revivable maybe do i want to do anything about it probably not so i think i'm just gonna let it be wait till the soil dries out and then water it and see if you know it comes back to life but yeah you have to make sure you don't let your plants get too hot with no airflow if they're acclimated to being outside you have to do it slowly so you bring it out maybe during springtime when it's like maybe 15 20 degrees and then you slowly let it get used to 30 degree weather which is what's happening right now in toronto but you can't leave it in any condition where it's 30 plus degrees with no airflow and it just will die on you that's pretty much what happened with me another thing is sun so afternoon sun is very, very strong. It will definitely burn the leaves if the plant is not used to direct sunlight or even needs direct sunlight. So what happened with my African violets? These are my variegated African violets. They are now a lot smaller and not symmetrical because a lot of the leaves pretty much got scorched. So they got burnt in the sun because I left it there in the sun for maybe about like half an hour or something like that but it was afternoon sun it was like 30 plus degrees outside these were inside so it was in perfectly fine temperature wise but it was just the sun was too strong so what i did was i just chopped off a lot of the leaves which get discolored and mushy and soft um and then i'm just trying to propagate it so i put it into a little pot of dry soil so just regular potting mix and Hopefully it will bring new babies of African violets. Uh, it was really sad because it literally just happened the day I brought it home and it was my fault. I didn't realize that area was gonna get so much sun. And yeah, now it's like barely holding on. I don't even think it's gonna bloom anytime soon because it has so little leaves. And these are actually pretty hard to find, the variegated African violets. I know not a lot of people like them, but I personally think they're really pretty. I like more of the foliage as opposed to the flowers, but I wouldn't complain if they bloom. Very unlikely now. So yeah, I'm pretty much just gonna have to wait it out and just let it produce more leaves and then eventually bloom. So those are two mistakes that I've made so far, one with too hot of a temperature, one with too much sun. So now we'll go to the opposite end, which is cold damage so i've had this one my aglionema silver bay this one when i bought it it was in the middle of winter i think i bought it in january february and it was probably negative 15 to 20 outside and what i did was i thought it would be okay as long as it was in a plastic bag so i brought this from the store to my car which was about a five minute walk outside in negative 15 degree weather where the plant wasn't packaged properly it wasn't like sealed in a box where it was you know nice and warm it was just out in the elements essentially and it got a lot of cold damage and i had to chop off the leaves because they were getting really brown and crispy and just kind of like flopping around so that's one uh, another one is this one so this one i also had to chop off and there's actually a couple that i actually just chopped the entire leaf off because it was just it was just not salvageable at that point but it's grown a lot of new leaves since then but now i'm a lot more careful when i do buy plants in the winter because unless you're bringing it straight to your car like it's not going to be outside for more than like a minute i don't think 
that would be a problem but if it is more than that it can definitely get cold damage and this isn't even a particularly sensitive plant so if it happened to one of my more uncommon and rare aeroids i'd be a lot more sad but silver bays are pretty common and easy to find in nurseries but i just don't want to replace it and i'm just giving it some time to recover and the new leaves that come out are absolutely beautiful so still doing great next i want to talk about pests so when i used to buy plants i never quarantined them put them in their own space as they acclimate to my environment and make sure that there are no pests in the soil or on the leaves, foliage, whatever, nothing. So I never used to do that. I used to just put it straight into my plant collection. I might do a little bit of an inspection when I first buy it, just kind of very briefly, and then I just put it on my plant shelf. Little did I know, you cannot do that. Actually, I didn't know. I was just too lazy to really quarantine them. <laughs> because I have very limited space in my room and uh, lighting, good lighting. So I would just kind of put all my plants together. So that's what happened. And when I brought one of my newer plants home, it actually was had a slight infestation of an unknown pest. I'm thinking it was thrips because it didn't look like spider mites. I didn't see any webbing and I didn't see any mealybugs, which are kind of like furry little bugs that are small and they don't really move. So this one was kind of just all over the new leaves, which I'll show you the damage it did. It happened to my poor Freddy, so my alocasia phreatic. So as you can see, it's kind of like not doing too hot. This one is kind of droopy and it's yellowing, and this one is pretty much on its way, you know, to plant heaven. But this is the new leaf and you can see that there's some damage, little marks on the leaves. I don't know if you guys can see but yeah this is the newest leaf and it was crawling with these black bugs that I saw which I probably got from a newer plant and then it spread to this one so my allocation product my Thai constellation and my gloriosum so those three because they were pretty much touching each other it was easy for the pests to kind of go from one plant to the other so now I don't let my plants touch for one so i kind of space them out more apart i inspect my plants more and i also quarantine them when i first buy it so usually for about a few days to a week i will put them off to a different location before i kind of introduce it to the rest of my plants and that way you can avoid things like that happening because i had to spray all of them with insecticide soap and it was a little heartbreaking because I was so scared it would actually damage the foliage. Thank God it didn't with my other two plants. This one, I think it's just still recovering because it had the biggest infestation, my alopecia product. But I think it's going to make it. I mean, it still put out a new leaf during this time. And I haven't seen any more bugs since then. And yeah, hopefully it's okay. But yeah, that pretty much concludes everything I wanted to talk to you guys about the mistakes I've made as a new plant parent. And yeah. If you guys want to share some stories down in the comments down below, I would love to hear it and engage with you guys and see, you know, what uh, you guys experience because everyone has different experiences. I know a lot of people, especially when they're new plant parents, they tend to overwater their plants and kill them, give it root rot. I don't really tend to do that. Mine is more laziness and forgetfulness when it comes to being like taking care of my plants. So yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.